IMDB until, you know, I, I did some research ahead of time, obviously, because that was always the biggest question. How are you going to get the music cleared? You know, I'm not getting involved. And so, and I wasn't concerned about it. I was concerned about the story. And I felt like um, the story would get the music cleared if yeah. the story was seen. So they're like 12 cues. They're all cleared. Um, and um, yeah, up until then, I think Saving Silverman had four or something. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know the exact numbers. I'm not on the record. Kind of, kind of, I guess I am, but um, <laughs> to the best of my recollection. Yeah, so anyway, I got kind of good at that legal speak, actually, because um, when we were premiering it at Slam Dance a couple years ago in Park City, shortly before Thunder even arrived to town, um, I had gotten an email from uh, some legal people um, from a record label informing me that I didn't have permission to screen it, and I shouldn't, or I'd get in a lot of trouble. So I kind of freaked out because the... Um, I didn't freak out, but I was a little concerned because uh, I couldn't pay for <laughs> all those violations and didn't intend to. I always wanted to do the right thing and never wanted negative energy around the film, ever. And uh, so I postponed the screening, and when Thunder got to town, I said, hey, we're going to have to postpone it, and I tried to just keep this cool. It'll all be good. It'll all be good. Meanwhile, I was about ready to jump off my balcony, I think. And... Um, we had submitted the request months and months and months ago, but as you know, the music publishing world is a huge machine, and there are many people involved in many gears, and it hadn't gotten up the flagpole, so to speak. And we all know who's at the top of the flagpole for Neil Diamond's clearance. It's, it's Mr. Diamond himself. <laughs> so it, hadn't, it didn't have enough time to go there, and uh, the people I consulted with said, your only hope, it was over a holiday weekend, said your only hope is to get to him, and no one knew how to get to him. It's very, you know, it's a of course, none of us would know how to get to him. So I had a phone number in my phone that I had saved for a long time. It was a cell phone number that I had gotten, and I was quite sure that uh, it was right, but I wasn't sure because I'd never called it, and it was that of Eddie Vedder. And so um, in a panic in the middle of the night, I called it, and uh, I left a message, and I hoped it was him, and I was kind of, I was emotional. And then um, he called back, and... Uh, <laughs> He's like, hey, Greg, it's Eddie. And I'm like, <laughs> and he, he um, you know, of course, he has music that needs to be cleared in the film as well. And so I had sent a screener to him as well and his people. And of course, they have a flagpole as well. And I had no idea it was even on the flagpole until I talked to him. And he said he was aware of it. He knew about the film and um, he was going to take a look at it. But he, he knew you guys. And, and that was the most important thing. And he said, uh, man, uh, I'm away, he was in some other time zone. And he said, I mean, literally geographically. And he said, <laughs> I, just, I don't want to insult anyone. It was really kind of him, so I don't want anything misunderstood for the record. And uh, he said, I'll do what I can. And, and uh, you know, we got to get the artist out in front of the machine and it's too important and independent. And I was like, yeah, that's great. And so, um, so I was like, cool. And he's like, you know, I'll call you back. And, so I went to bed a little bit more comforted that at least I'd done everything I could, and by being patient and never calling that number for an interview or anything, I, I, for some reason, maybe I just subliminally, uh, subconsciously knew that I'd need that chip someday. So long story short, he, um, he got back to me and said he, he, he and his manager were doing what they could, but there was no guarantee. And in the meantime, we prepared, a, we prepared a, one of the copies of the film. I know this is long, sorry. We prepared one That's of the copies of the film right? with no music Neil Diamond music at all. So there would have been scenes, and it actually it was, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> and, and it was just a different film. And unfortunately, it kind of would have been negative energy, and I didn't want that. But the, the nature of the film, as you could see, there would have been just silence, and just Mike Lightning. And it would have been silence, and that would have become part of the story. And I didn't think it was fair. So all I asked was that if it's a no, just Give me a no, please, and so I can move forward. And if, if you, and hopefully you would say yes. But if it's no, it's okay. I can, I'm still going to tell their story. Well, uh, that was the end uh, of that. And then we we went, got to the screening night, our postponed screening night, and uh, and then we got a call at the bar while Thunder was performing about an hour before the screening. And um, the bartender said, "Greg, you have a phone call on line two at the bar." And it was a real dirtbag bar. And he, and I said, "What?" And so I go and I go, "Hello." And he go at the bar, and he goes, this voice goes, Greg Coase? I'm like, yes. He goes, this is Neil Diamond. <laughs> and he wanted to talk to Thunder. And, he, and he, he told me the one thing I remember, I wrote it on a napkin. He said, I love, 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 he said four times, love this film. And um, 
he gave us permission, and Thunder spoke to him, and then across, on the way across the street, she could tell you about and that. And I but, missed that yeah. picture as I was coming up on the stage. I missed that picture. Uh, did you, you showed a picture of... Uh, we did. It's, it's been added since because the film is... Yeah, that wasn't in the it. version I, saw, I originally saw. I saw, saw me yeah. hugging Neil at the concert, but it's as evolving. I was coming up, I missed that, unfortunately. I'm sure I'll see it, but... As we walked across the street to the, the, the screening, um, my phone rang, and it said EV, which was my little code in case my phone got ever stolen. And I said, hello, he goes, Greg. I'm like, hey, who's it, Eddie? And it was snowing, and it was 10.30 at night, and we were very emotional, all of us so happy. And he goes, I just found out that he watched it, and he likes it. And I said, I know, he just called me. And he goes, no effing way. <laughs> and then I go, yeah. And he goes, man, that's so cool. And I said, and then I just lost it. And I just said everything I'd always want to say to him. Maybe you might want to say to him, Steve. I said, you're a rock star. <laughs> And then I said, I love you, and, and, and I think we both feel the same way about Roger here. He's a rock star, and, and we love him. Absolutely, absolutely. So before we go to the floor for questions, how do you feel watching this movie here? What goes, what goes through your mind? What goes through your heart? Um, well, this is next to Philadelphia. This is like the biggest crowd um, that I believe has seen the movie in one place. And that's very exciting to me. I mean, I knew it was going to be exciting. I was told by Greg that the theater held something like 1,400 people. But I never imagined this. And, and it's wonderful. Um, some of my friends came from um, uh, Milwaukee. Uh, Mark Shirilla is in the audience, and he was in the film. Uh, say hi, Mark. And um, my best friend, Stephanie, is here, and she took me through a lot of that last week. Stephanie is my best friend. And um, Jane is here. And Captain Ken is here. He's, uh, he's uh, a very good friend, very good. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I'd like to mention them. But um, no, I feel, I feel phenomenal. This week has been phenomenal, and this has been the climactic ending to everything that uh, I imagined it to be, everything. That's absolutely beautiful. What would you like us to take from this movie? You know, uh, perhaps related to what Chaz told us, but what Distribution. Would you... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being honest. Um, we have not yet released this on DVD, and we don't want to because we want distribution. So, but but of course we want it to be on DVD on a major label, of course. Um, but <laughs> seriously, <laughs> I forgot what you asked. Now, <laughs> maybe we'll leave it on that high note. Oh. So let us uh, open the, the, the floor for questions. And Delphine? What's... 